next primary is more than two weeks away. The candidates are reassessing where they go from here. Joining us now, Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, happy Easter. Welcome back to Fox happy News Sunday. Good to be with you. Let's talk about you a little bit and where you see yourself going here. Um, you seem reconciled to the likelihood, if not the inevitability, of Mitt Romney as your party's nominee. Well, I think you have to be realistic, given the size of his organization, given the number of primaries he's won. Uh, he is far and away the most likely Republican nominee. And if he does get to 1,144 delegates, I'll support him. I'll do everything I can this fall to help him defeat Obama, because the, the primary goal of the entire Republican Party has to be to defeat Barack Obama. So what makes this maybe the most important election of our lifetime. Now, you have indicated that one of the reasons you're staying in the race is to influence the platform. I, I, what, do you, what do you hope to do with look, the platform? Look, I, I think platforms matter in the long run evolution of a party. And a party is more than just a presidential candidate. It's Senate candidates, House candidates, it's state legislators. I mean, when, when I go around the country, uh, the number of people who walk up to me and say, they used to listen to GOPAC tapes, uh, now the Senate minority Go leader. GOPAC was an organization I helped build. Right. And we would send out training tapes. This is 25 years ago. And people walk up and say, you know, I'm now the, the Senate Majority Leader. I'm now the, uh, the Speaker of the House. I mean, you have this, this long-term evolution in the states. You have, the, you have this long-term evolution of the party. And we're not an etch-a-sketch party. It was an unfortunate comment by Romney's communications director. We are a broadly conservative party. We don't have to be severely conservative, as Romney said at CPAC. But we also need something else that is really hard to do in American politics. We need a new generation of breakthroughs. This country is in trouble. Uh, the industrial world is in trouble. You look at uh, Spain has 21 or 22 percent unemployment. The Greeks may suffer a one-third decline in the standard of living. Uh, there are huge problems around the world. So what are the key elements you uh, see in this platform? One is an American independence energy policy that really is aimed at making sure no future president ever bows to a Saudi king and at making sure that we bring several million jobs home by producing probably four million barrels a day more of oil here in the United States. Uh, second would be a personal Social Security savings account. Back in 1983, the last time we've tried to fix Social Security, if we had adopted a Chilean model where people have a personal account, there'd be $16 trillion in savings right today. That's how much the buildup would have been just based on what's happened in, in Chile, which is not a theory. It's, a, it's actually happening. Uh, we, need a, we need an approach, frankly. We need to stand up very firmly for religious liberty. Uh, the assault on the Catholic Church is very real, and it's not just the Catholic Church. So how do you Church. phrase, how do you express that in a platform? Uh, I think you have a plank that says flatly that the, the government should not force its values on any religious institution. And I think, I think that that's a very key part of this. Uh, I, I was at a, a Baptist school, not a Catholic school, uh, Louisiana College, and the president said they are a right-to-life institution, and that if Obamacare is imposed on them, they will close the institution. All right rather than violate their religious beliefs. Now, you know, George W. Bush had issued an executive order that, that guaranteed right of conscience. Right, got it. Obama is doing just the opposite. He so is opposing else? government. Uh, I think that you need to have, uh, I, I would like to see all of the revenue from this new, new expanded energy program go into a debt repayment fund. I mean, when you look at the size of the federal deficit today, and you figure... So you're young saying people, that on the, the royalties that would flow from the opening up of be sequestered the right into federal the land. Off the debt. Right. right. Now, where does that money now go? It goes into this general operating fund. All right. So. So, so you need to get to a balanced budget, which Paul Ryan has started down the road towards. And you need to be able to pay down debt. Uh, pay down right. debt. And this is, so when you get to the general election this fall, you, you're talking about very large decisions. All right. So do you have any reason to believe that Mitt Romney would, were he the, as, since he's the likely nominee, would resist you on any of those planks? I don't know. I, I, th I think, a lot, of, I think a, a lot of them he will adopt. Now, you had a meeting well, with we've, him we've, recently. We've talk, we haven't talked about specific details, but we've, we've certainly talked in general. Uh, he, he is, as I said, he has said himself, he's described himself as severely conservative in his CSPAC sp speech. I think conservative is enough. Uh, I suspect he will accept uh, a, a solid conservative platform, but he does have consultants who are in the Etch-a-Sketch tradition uh, who would like to somehow go into... Uh, the situation and not have anybody there. I, look, I, look, well, yeah, in fairness, Mr. Speaker, that yeah. etch comment was made in reference to the fact that you do a kind of an emphasis reset, not a compli you don't 
change of convictions going into the general. That's not what he was saying. I mean, I mean, that's isn't sure. it unfair to describe him as a as a man who's going to rewrite his whole well, Romney, platform. Well, first of all, Romney didn't say it. I know so, he didn't. That's what I'm saying. So, the reference was right. to the idea that so, you, so and every candidate makes a makes yeah. a makes a change in emphasis. Right. To so, the, so Romney's in a pretty good place to say to the party, let's have a very solid, aggressive platform, which he can campaign on, but which can also appeal to a majority. I mean, take for example energy independence. That's like a 79 to 16 issue. I mean, there are very few Democrats who like us depending on Saudi Arabia. Uh, and, and, and there are almost no Republicans who like us depending on Saudi Arabia. So, so you, can, you can build an aggressive platform that also sets the stage for a fall campaign. I mean, Reagan didn't exactly reset in the fall of 1980. Uh, he, he articulated a series of things that, that brought the country together in a pretty decisive victory. So let's talk about what's happened to you in this campaign and where you are now. Right. Um, you seem, while you were here in Washington and, and you had a platform here at Fox News and elsewhere, um, you were essentially, you were sort of in a post-political phase of your career. Right. Then you ran and got back in the middle of things. So where do you go now? Where are you, where, well, what's the future for you? <laughs> do you want to, would you like to serve in an administration? No, I, th I think, I mean, if I'm not, if I end up not being the nominee, uh, I've already talked to, to Chairman Reince Priebus at the Republican National Committee. I'd, I'd want to work this fall to help defeat Obama in any way I could. Whatever, whatever the team thinks I can do to be helpful, I will do. Uh, and beyond that, to use your phrase, I'll go back to a post-political career. Uh, I'm glad I did this. I think it was, for me, it was important as a citizen to try to do some very hard things, to try to bring new ideas and new approaches. It turned out to be much harder than I thought it would be. But it was, it, it was the right thing for me to do at that point, both in my life and for where I thought the country was. So okay. I, I have no regrets. But, but it's, it's, uh, it's clear that, that Governor Romney had done a very good job of building a very substantial machine. Uh, and, and that it's, 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 I think Santorum is discovering in Pennsylvania right now, uh, it's a challenge. You think he should, for his own good, do you think Santorum should get out? No, oh, I think he has to make that decision. And let me say, I hope everybody watching will have that family in their prayers because their daughter, I think, I is understand. back in the yeah, hospital. It's that a way. difficult yeah, situation. Yeah, tough Easter for them. We're all thinking yeah. about them. Um, now, what is, what's the situation with regard to money? We've got to go it's, broke it's, doing it's, this. It's hard. We're, um, no, we're not going to go broke. Are you into but, personal but, funds? No, not, not well, a little bit, but not dramatically. So but but we'll, we'll, we'll probably... Carl Cameron, our Carl Cameron yeah. reported this week that you were something like $4.5 million in debt. Is that a fact? I think slightly less than that, but we owe, we owe much more than we wanted to. Fl Florida got to be a real brawl, I'll bet. and I think uh, uh, so our, unfortunately, our, unfortunately, our guys tried to match Romney, and it turned out that uh, we didn't have anything like his capacity to yeah, raise money. Well, so tell me how you get past that. Well, you do the same thing. I mean, Cl Hillary came out of the 2008 campaign owing 25 million dollars. I mean, you, you you go out and you do fundraisers and you and you work things out with people and you spend. A fair amount of time for a couple of years raising the money. Well, this will severely constrain the extent to which you can campaign and do ads and travel. Will it not from here no, to the? No, I mean, in terms of my campaign. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the campaign it does. We're 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 operating on a shoestring, and we're frankly we've had great response in Delaware, which is a state you can operate inexpensively. We have a great response in in North Carolina, and we'll see what happens in those two upcoming primaries. And uh, but it's really interesting when you're on, out on the road, or or even last night uh, I went to. Uh, Easter Vigil at the Basilica, and afterwards people walk up. Um, in, in Delaware this week, North Carolina this week, people don't walk up and say, oh, please drop out. People walk up and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're talking about ideas. Please stay in. How can I help? And so I do think there's a desire for a more idea-oriented Republican Party, right. uh, even, even if that doesn't translate necessarily into being able to take on the Romney so, machine. So you're a man who at one point was leading in the polls. Yes. You even suggested that you were on a glad path to uh -huh. the nomination, and it didn't work out. I yeah. want to ask you a question about your faith. Yes. How did your faith affect the way you dealt with the, with the disappointment and the, and the, and the defeats that, that came your way? I said, well, the glad path turned out to run into an anti-aircraft gun called there you Romney. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one of the biggest things, when Clist and I did a movie in John Paul II called Nine Days to Change the World, and we really spent a lot of time studying the Pope, going back to Poland and studying his life under communism, and before that, his life under Nazism, where he lived under a death sentence if he was caught. Um, he doesn't say have courage. He says be not afraid. Uh, and I think, uh, I get, I'll get all emotional, but 
on Easter Sunday. It's good to remember. If you can shadow, if you can hide beneath the cross, there's nothing to be afraid of. This is a great campaign. We've had great experiences. Um, some things work. Some things don't work. Now, would you, how would you describe your relationship right now with Mitt Romney? You guys have said some very harsh things about each other. You essentially <laughs> accepted yeah. and, and argued the vulture capitalism case, although right. that was not your phrase, but essentially right. you agreed with that. Pretty harsh stuff coming from sure. a conservative about a businessman. He said some quite harsh things about you. Right. Are you men at peace with each other at this point? Sure. I, I think, look, uh, I hit him as hard as I could. He hit me as hard as he could. Turned out he had more things to hit with than I did. Uh, and, and that's part of the business. And he's, and he's done the fundraising side brilliantly. Um, we are both, and I think Santorum would agree with this, we are, we are absolutely committed to defeating Barack Obama. Uh, if Mitt Romney ends up as a Republican nominee, I will work as hard for him as I would for myself. And I think in all honesty, uh, you could ask Mitt, but I think if I would end up as a Republican nominee, he would work as hard for me. I mean, we really see this, we're both grandparents, we really see this as a fight for the future of our grandchildren's country. And we really see this as not just defeating Obama, but changing Washington is really, really central to the future of this country. I mean, this, this is the most important election in some ways since 1860. Barack Obama is a genuine radical. And, and, and if he gets reelected with this economy and these gas prices and this deficit, uh, who knows what he'd do in a second term? Well, he'd be constrained, though, by the likelihood that the Republicans would control at least one house well, and possibly this, but two. But this is a president who exploits every advantage of the presidency to minimize constraint. I mean, you know, when you have a Secretary of Defense who says, we don't need Congress's approval to go to war as long as we have the UN. Right. I mean, uh, this, is, this is not an administration I would rely on the ability of the Congress to constrain very well. Mr. Speaker, it's nice to have you this Thank Easter you. Sunday. Happy Easter to you, you and Mrs. Gingrich and Thank your family. You.